Today is a huge day for the Liver Foundation. And I, Dr. Kolan Bos, welcome you all to this session. And uh, it is a, a session where the Liver Foundation, West Bengal, along with the Indian Institute of Liver and Digestive Sciences, uh, is eagerly looking forward to a huge collaboration a very prominent university in the United States of America. To get started, I would like to welcome on the dais the very important and distinguished people who are here with us. To start with, I'd like to request OBG Choudhury, and uh, OBG Choudhury on the stage will then bring along Professor Sanyal. Arunje Sanyal, a gentleman who has achieved the impossible in his own lifetime, he has gained a huge status in the field of hepatology. Uh, I often actually compare him to Dame Sheila Sherlock. Uh, just as she could draw crowds, uh, Professor Sanyal is no less. We, I would like to welcome on stage Partho P. Mojumdar, who is the national chair, and he is the distinguished professor of the John C. Martin Center that we have here for liver disease so after that, it's my pleasure again to invite uh, Professor Arno Basu, who is a treasurer, Friends of Liver Foundation, West Bengal. He's based in California. And Mr. Adrian Pratt. He is the director of the American Center, Kolkata. Now we'll set the meeting rolling with the first talk by uh, Dr. Obhiji Choudhury. He needs no introduction to this audience. A very good morning to all of you. Those who are on the dais, Professor Shanyal, it's better to call him Urunda uh, as we are usually call him. And uh, I think most of the people, particularly doctors sitting here, would love to hear that. Mr. Pratt, who is acting consul general USA in Eastern Region and Kolkata, and is the director of the American Center. We are grateful that he could take time out of his very busy schedule and uh, join us here on this movement. Uh, Professor Mojumdar Ornob, who are on the stage, and uh, Mr. M. N. Roy, Dr. M. N. Roy, who is chairman of the governing board of uh, ILDS. Mr. De, Moloy De, who is uh, the governing, uh, chairman of the governing board of John C. Martin Center for Liver Research and Innovation. Dr. Devnaran Chakraborty, who has joined uh, us uh, in this uh, very day. They took all the troubles to join us, and they are well-wishers as well as guides for us. As uh, Kolanda has just, and all of our colleagues and friends, it's, it's really a very proud moment for us today. At the same time, it uh, bestows on us significant amount of responsibility, responsibility which is futuristic, responsibility to get tuned to do better surveys, which is ethical. As I was talking to Professor Shannal, we need to have a profession which is ethically oriented, give best of care, grounded the needs of the circumstances of our country. As this is a liver disease and digestive disease institute, we promise to people that we will provide the best of care. Uh, we need to do that, but we need to do that keeping in the context the reality that the professional values which Liver Foundation always keeps on inculcating, tries to keep on inculcating, is uphold to the highest of sanctity. At the same time, we need to do research, keeping in context Indian priorities, developing country priorities, but with a global mindset. And in this context, and training also, and we are a, obviously a teaching center, we have got diplomat national board program going on, we have got PhD program going on, we have got nursing school going on. So Liver Foundation West Bengal is really, really fortunate and happy that over a span of 15 years of his existence, and this institute over a span of seven years of his existence could shape in this way, thanks to all of you, our guides, our, I, I call everybody a volunteer for Liver Foundation, and that's what primarily we are. We are associated because Liver Foundation tries to sail a dream, and Liver Foundation keeps on talking to itself with a commitment and values which we need to keep in the center at all the points with that we keep on working. While telling so, I just want to mention that I expect and I'm pretty confident that this collaboration 
with Virginia Commonwealth University, Richmond, and in particular, the Stravis Shanyal Center Institute for Liver Disease and Metabolic Health out there, led by Professor Arun Shanyal, is going to lead us to a new era and new avenues of culture, of practice, of generation of research thoughts and in every area which we are, have promised our people to deliver. Again, I want to emphasize that we are trying to do things in our own way over the last couple of years or decades since our existence. But I'm pretty sure that with the tremendous amount of experience, insights that Professor Shannal carries with him everywhere in the globe. And Professor Shannal is the globe's liberal leader in that way. And uh, we are really proud that I'm being uh, very parochial, but I'm, I'm proud that a Bengali who, is, who has been the president of the American Association of Liver Disease and, and everything that somebody can uh, think uh, of achievement in life, he has, he has uh, been that. And now he's, and while I was coming from the airport with Dorunda, I was telling him that this is your institute. You tell us what we don't have, first of all, and what we need to do in the future. We have got all the commitments, we have got all the capabilities, but we need to uh, get that shaped in the right way. And please guide us. And I'm pretty sure that the context of this collaboration will really uh, take us to a new uh, avenues in future. And we will do, we'll try to do our best. And that's the promise in this very good morning that we are having uh, out here. I want to place a couple of things in this context also that I think most of you know, and I shared this with Mr. Adrian Pratt also when we met him, that this institute is a bit different from most of the institutes in the country in the way that this institute is absolutely built through philanthropic donation. And we emphasize that to us, and we emphasize that to everybody, and many of our donors are also present here. And they really would feel and should feel that, you know, there's whatever be the quantum of donation, it's not important. It's, it's the emotion, it's the warmth, it's the, it, it, that flows and that makes us move forward. I wish to mention particularly the donation and that keeps us reminding every way the donation that the John C. Martin Foundation uh, has made to make this institute look the way uh, it is today. As you know, most of us here know John Martin, and uh, we used to again call him John Dada. And whenever something new happens at ILDS, at Liver Foundation, we cannot but mention that it, it, it was this gentleman, and it is his legacy that telling us every moment that we need to respect the emotions that are there in the donation that had been made. I again want to, in this context also, I want to mention that this collaboration that VCU and the Stavis Shannal Institute led by Professor Shannal, the collaboration that is unfolding today and the context of this institute is really a bright embodiment of the uh, Indo-US collaboration that we are having and we are really grateful and Mr. Pratt is the representative of the people of United States who had been very warm and uh, we really are grateful to this collaboration and I would uh, uh, expect and I would look forward to a situation where through the connections and um, networking and as well as through our work we will do more collaborative, more outcome oriented things which are useful for Indian people, which are impacting in Indian science under the umbrella of this VCU Liver Foundation West Bengal collaboration. On behalf of Liver Foundation West Bengal, and I am also again, all of us are volunteers for Liver Foundation. On behalf of Liver Foundation West Bengal, Indian Institute of Liver and Digestive Sciences, John C. Martin Center for Liver Research and Innovations, and Chandrakanta Institute of Health Sciences, I really extending greetings to all of you to join us in this morning. Again, uh, thank you all for, uh, for this uh, sharing and thank you all who has joined us here. Thank you. Dr. Oshkar Nando Konar, who is the president, to please join us on the dais. Uh, now to the gentleman we've been all waiting this morning to hear from, uh, Professor Sanyal. Thank you. First of all, Obijit. Uh, I did not think at my age I could blush, but you made me blush. Uh, so good morning, everyone. And uh, it is absolutely 
a tremendous delight, pleasure, and an honor to be standing in front of you today. You know, I'd like to start by sharing a few thoughts about my personal journey and how this collaboration happened to be, and maybe share some thoughts about the vision for this collaboration. So I've been very fortunate where I was guided into hepatology, you know, at a point in time where therapeutics were just emerging for liver disease. Because when I was in training, there was not much you could do for patients with liver disease. You just talked a lot and held their hand. But through these last three decades, many of the things that you use every day, uh, like the TIPS procedure, the in integration of rifaximin for hepatic encephalopathy, best practices in the use of terlipressin, even some of the developments in hepatitis C, the FIB4, which is a standard part of how we assess liver disease, these are all things that have emerged from our uh, program in Richmond, Virginia. So Todd Stravitz is one of my colleagues. I actually recruited him as a fellow from medicine residency. He was a chief resident at UNC when he came to Virginia. And he did his fellowship with us. And then under the mentorship of Reno Vlasovic, uh, joined faculty and um, you know, uh, has been a tremendous colleague for several decades and a global authority on acute liver failure and coagulation in liver disease uh, in his own right. And we were just reminiscing about the last three decades, a couple of years ago, or yeah. And what we realized is that while we did a few things, and that was okay, it was by no means it was by no means sufficient. And what really we need is to make sure that when we age out, because eventually the clock does not stop for anyone, we leave behind a platform that allows generation after generation after generation of people to come build a scientific career focused on improving health of the people who can believe in a purpose that is much larger than they are individually and dedicate their life to that mission of serving the human race, which is what the medical profession is and should be at all times. And thus we created the Liver Institute at Virginia Commonwealth University, uh, supported very generously by Dr. Stravitz's family. But the goal here is to create a platform to further build on what we have already created in Virginia and to connect what we are doing in Virginia to bridges across Latin America, Eastern Europe, Middle East, Asia, Far East, so that truly we create a global consortium of like-minded people who are focused on improving health of the people with a focus around liver disease and particularly the central role the liver plays as a determinant of metabolic health. Because when the liver goes down, all the organs get sick. And so that brings us to our collaboration with Obijit, who I've now known for many years. It was a great pleasure for me to come in 2018 when we laid the foundation stone for the John Martin Research Center. And the trajectory of this institute even through the years of COVID. It's only been a few years, five years, and with COVID in the middle. Despite all of this, the trajectory of this institute is remarkable and driven by the passion of one man, Obijit Choudhury. And for that, I congratulate you. It is also the reason we chose to build on this ongoing exchange of ideas to turn it into something real something that will become a platform and a legacy that long after all of us are gone will continue to serve the people of the world by creating a mechanism to train generation after generation of people 
who will then do phenomenal science and bring it back to the patients, and so that in the end, patients will benefit. The central pillars of this collaboration are four. First is clinical. Just because we know something that we were taught in medical school doesn't mean that knowledge is sufficient for the rest of our life. Diseases change, COVID taught us that. The presentation of diseases change. The world is changing, there's climate change, the axis of the earth has changed. All of these are going to have health consequences. We need to continuously learn from each other about how diseases look like in different parts of the world and use the learnings from different areas so that we do are not constantly reinventing the wheel. We can actually learn in real time and be able to provide better care in real time. Next is the need for research. Because even with the best medicine we can practice today anywhere in the world, our outcomes are not what it should be. If we could cure every disease, fine. No research, you can go home. But until then, we need to continuously push the boundaries of medicine where the outcomes are not optimal for our patients, where we can find better treatments for patients at less cost, treatments that are accessible to the millions of people who cannot afford a huge expensive therapies. While those are great for conglomerate hospitals to build massive towers and make a lot of money, that doesn't help people with disease in our communities. And that's again why we want to collaborate with you, Obijit, because of your purity of your purpose. And we believe in the same purity of purpose in pushing the science and leading with the science. So we have to continuously do science together, learning from each other. The third pillar is education and training. Because you and I can do whatever research we want, but one day we will be old and we will not be able to do it. Which means we have to continuously create an environment and a culture which is an incubator for the next generation and the generation after that. And if we can ignite that passion for science and discovery for the betterment of the human race, then we have actually done something good. And we hope through this collaboration we will develop the mechanisms to promote that. And lastly, we need to think about what does it take to shift the needle on the ground in terms of public health. When I was president of the American Association for Liver Disease, we would go to Congress to ask for money for liver disease. And multiple senators told me, you're a liver doctor, of course you want money for liver disease. That's otherwise, you, that's your only reason to exist. And I found it very offensive initially because I thought, oh my God, I've got pure purpose. I'm the pure guy, you know? I have a politician telling me I'm not pure. How dare they? But when you hear this three or four times, you have to stop and say, why is everybody saying this? And you realize, despite all the science, all the publications, the burden of disease in our society and the community has not changed. The access to care issues have not changed. So if we are going to change what reality for our patients look like, we have to get into the business of what determines health policy. How do we understand the burden of disease, the social burden, the economic burden, the medical burden, the healthcare resource burden? How do we integrate all this information with the medical research that we are doing so that we can develop care pathways, we can create approaches where we can provide cost-effective care but with the highest quality of outcomes. At the very least, that should be an aspirational goal. So these, I think, if we can engage around these four common principles. And I believe with the best minds here and the best minds in the US, and we are already engaging with people in Brazil and in Mexico and in Turkey and in Singapore, you know, when all of these minds come together, we will solve the big problems of today 
and we will also create an environment that when new challenges appear on the horizon, the next generation will be fully prepared to tackle them. And that is the vision for the collaboration and Obijit. Today is the first day of this amazing new chapter of our relationship. And I, for one, am really looking forward. You know, when you get into your 60s, there aren't that many things to look forward to. And this is something I'm really, really looking forward to. Thank you for being such a good friend. Hello, it's a pleasure now to request the next speaker, Mr. Parthupi Mojungar, who's the national chair and the distinguished professor of the John C. Martin uh, Liver Research Institute here. Well, honestly, I'm also a volunteer of the Liver Foundation, West Bengal. It's really a great pleasure to be here. I'm not a clinician. I do participate in various kinds of research that impinges on human health and disease. Uh, I also educate, to a certain extent, even uh, clinicians to, uh, you know, in, in terms of methodology of research and so on. Um, I don't want to be long because I'm still trying to absorb what uh, Ovijit and Orunda have said. Uh, essentially, uh, I think all of you are trying to do so as well, so I really won't be long. I just want to refer to two points that uh, both uh, Professor Sanyal and Professor Abhijit Choudhury have made. One is that Professor Sanyal has said that he's been, you know, practicing in the United States and doing research in the United States. He's been the president of the American Society for the Study of Liver and so on and so forth. Uh, now he has expanded his horizons and is uh, looking to the Far East, to the Global South, and so on and so forth. Uh, I just want to refer to one article that I wrote yesterday. Many of you uh, who are from the city may have read that article that's, that appeared in the Telegraph, and I just made two points there. One is that you know I essentially do genomics of diseases. Most of our health and disease have genomic underpinnings, and we try and understand that and its interaction with liver, with the environment. So it really doesn't matter for me whether I'm looking at cardiovascular disease, whether I'm looking at liver disease, etc. Uh, in all of these organs, there when these fail, these organs fail or uh, go through different kinds of pathologies. There is an underlying genomic uh, underpinning to that. And we need to understand that to be able to uh, understand more about the organ, more about the uh, pathologies and so on. So the point that I made yesterday, and I'll quote a statistic which is grim, if you look at genetic studies of all of the various kinds of organs of the human body, in 2011, 86% of those studies pertained to only Caucasian individuals, white Caucasians. 2021, that number 86% has not changed, which essentially means that we are trying to understand disease in white Caucasians only, and we are trying to extrapolate that knowledge to, let's say, Africans, Indians, and wherever else humanity belongs. This is not right, and we have plenty of examples that you cannot actually study one group and extrapolate that knowledge to other groups. You have to embrace multiple groups of humanity to be able to understand a disease, to be able to make predictions on a disease, to be able to impact on the health of people everywhere. And therefore, I really, really appreciate what uh, Professor Sanyal just said, that he has uh, formed this institute uh, with a philanthropic donation and is now looking elsewhere. Uh, Far East, Global South, and so on and so forth. So I really believe that this uh, you know, engagement with us, with the Liver Foundation, uh, will actually pave the way for understanding liver disease in particular, but also will provide an example of how uh, these kinds of studies, these kinds of research studies need to be done. He's mentioned that there are four pillars of this particular initiative that he has taken, he and Abhijit have taken. Uh, I certainly am not uh, competent at all to talk about the first pillar, which is the clinical pillar, but so far as the research uh, and, and the education, the second and third pillars that he talked about are concerned, uh, I think we will be able to play a, 
you know, a, a good role, a lead lead role in um, in India and uh, elsewhere in South a in Global South uh, to provide an example of how these kinds of things need to be understood and why embracing diversity of humanity and including heterogeneity in all our studies is so important. I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Sanyal. Thank you, Professor Chaudhary. Uh, may I now, now request Mr. Arnold Basu, who is in Boston, who is based in Boston, and he's the treasurer of the Friends of Liver Foundation, West Bengal, but that is based in California, USA. So, thank you, Kualanda, for the nice introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. So, I'm representing the Friends of Liver Foundation, West Bengal. So, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization registered in California, U.S., as Kolanda just mentioned, and formed actually on the ideals of the Liver Foundation, and um, Obhijitda has an important role in it. So in the next few slides, I will talk about how we are formed and a brief about the work we are doing. We actually are uh, started around 2019, or as we say, in a different era, like the pre-COVID era. So it started by Dr. Obhijit Choudhury on the dais and Kishore Nandalaya. And it was discussed during one of the meetings with Dr. Choudhury has uh, with Kishore during his visit to Gilead. And that time, Kishore was working in the Gilead. So after the initial discussions, we tried to form the do you know, need the paperwork, and it's an important year, like 2020, where we all hit with the pandemic. So it took a lot of time for us to go through all the paperwork and everything, and ultimately we got the 5013C designation from the IRS in 2020, and, and we launched in 2021 through a Zoom, as was the norm during the time, and since we are trying to work with Liver Foundation and others, contribute to the healthcare. So let's meet the team. As I mentioned, Kishore, uh, who is in uh, San Francisco area in California. He was the founding president. Um, the other team members is Sunil, who is in Texas, uh, Dr. Ranjit Roy and Nur Muhammad Sheikh in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, me, as Kolanda mentioned, from Boston. Um, and Obhijit Da or Dr. Obhijit Choudhury from India. So this is the main team which we are working on. And another person actually deserves special mention is Partha, uh, <laughs> without whom nothing would have been possible, and a tireless contributor. And this is just a small number of people. And there are lots of other people who are involved in the Friends of Liver Foundations, like Dr. Devnaran Chakraborty and Dr. Bulbul Chakraborty sitting in the audience. Uh, even Dr. Shannal has helped us when we formed initially in the 2021 and advised us. And there are countless other peoples there. So what is the area of our focus? Uh, so the friends, people in, most of the friends of the people in Liver Foundations have a unique uh, perspective. We are born here, educated here, and then at some point in immigrated in the US. So, and then our sons and next generation growing up. So we have a roots in both the communities. So one of the things that we talked about that we should focus on the local communities and have a local community engagement, which means um, both in India and US. Of course, we are heavily biased towards uh, uh, life science research or healthcare. So there is definitely, we wanted to look into that the healthcare access and if there is any opportunity to increase it. Um, then we wanted to talk, again, from that angle, we wanted to spread the awareness about the different diseases. And being on the research area, and as Dr. Shannal just mentioned, you need research. So one of the idea was to contribute into the truth research. And then, of course, um, try to help in a increase in the qualified medical professionals. Now, these are lofty goals, and we are not there yet, but hope to be uh, there sometime. 
So the first one, which is the local community engagement. So the organization has done blood drives. Um, we have actually conducted in the three, United, three states, which is California, Texas, and Missouri, about eight blood drives, which is an important uh, contribution to the local community there. And the other thing we, as I mentioned to you, is the healthcare access. So as I mentioned, we started during the COVID time. So COVID played an important role there. So we actually collaborated with Liver Foundation to work on to oxygen on fields, to set up the field support during the COVID time, um, to increase the actual access for the vaccines through grants, and of course, the awareness campaigns. So actually, it's all the credit. I'll say the maximum credit goes to the Liver Foundation since they did all the legwork. Uh, this year, actually, we worked a little bit with the uh, doctors without borders for uh, provide by providing grants um, to help people in Turkey and Syria who are affected by the devastating earthquake. So another signature is uh, spread awareness against the diseases. So we worked with the um, NASH uh, for day to spread awareness about the non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases. Um, the important part of this is that it is an initiative led by our next generations. As you can see in the interview, um, there it is read by Rohit Nandalaya, who is a college student. And there are many others, and actually one of them is here, my son Udayan, who also worked in that. Um, that. So others, like as I mentioned, we have a biasness towards the research because most of us came from a research field. So we looked into, tried to look into the different projects and we are glad to initiate a project um, with Dr. Mark Mannery and the Liver Foundation. Uh, Dr. Mannery is from Washington University, St. Louis and a leading expert in the childhood uh, malnutrition and Parthu is leading that project. Uh, so the main focus at this point of the project is the initial scope uh, or, the, or the initial scope is to develop novel complementary foods for the infants and using the local ingredients so that we can provide to the nutrients and expecting or the new mothers to make a healthy society. So what's the function of the Friends of Liver Foundation here? Because this is, an, uh, this is a collaboration between Dr. Mark Mannery and the Liver Foundation. So our role is that uh, it started at the initiative of Dr. Noor Mohammad Sheikh, who is a uh, works with colleague of uh, Professor Mannery and works on gut microbiota. Um, and other is that we provided uh, a small part of the research grant for this program, pilot program. And there is a hope to increase the further scope of this work as um, the gut microbiota has known to have an effect on malnutrition and um, it will be probably in the second phase uh, or as we move into it. So this is how we wanted to contribute in, in a small way to the research. And the other thing is to increase the qualified pop medical professionals, which we know is there is a huge shortage. Um, so one of the uh, work we are doing with Chandrakant Institute of Nursing and Health Sciences the Friends of Liver Foundation. So we are providing scholarship to the nurse students. And in addition, we are providing um, the enrichment students through nursing school students. Uh, Kishore has actually taken a lead there. And in addition, um, there are other peoples and a lot of peoples here, including Partho, uh, who is involved in this um, enrichment program, which is uh, to help the nursing students. So this is in short uh, uh, work of the Liver Friends of Liver Foundation is doing. And thank you all for your attention. We will now have the formal declaration of collaboration. Okay. Uh, 
Now I request Mr. Adrian Pratt, who is the director of the American Center Kolkata, to say a few words, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am delighted and grateful to be here on such an auspicious occasion and honored uh, to share the stage with such an august panel of people. Um, at this important point in time um, for the India-US relationship, I've been asked to talk a little bit about um, collaboration between our two countries, of which I think today is a perfect example. When Dr. Chowdhury first told me about the wonderful relationship between John C. Martin and this institution, it really moved me because this is where the relationship runs so deep at the people-to-people -people level. Um, when you described to me how you first met John um, Martin, it was literally just happenstance. It was a conversation between two people um, in a place not either in America or in India that led to such consequential results, part of which we are witnessing here today. There are more than four million Indians in the United States and every day they deepen the ties between our two countries, each one of them an ambassador. But so do, do so too do people like Dr. Martin, working away at things they believe in and are passionate about. As we gather here today to celebrate the occasion of advancing the frontiers, the formal collaboration between Virginia Commonwealth University and the Liver Foundation of West Bengal, we must reflect on the profound impact of our joint efforts and the boundless potential that lies ahead. Collaboration to address global health challenges is one of the oldest and most um, successful aspects of the relationship between our two nations. For over 50 years, the United States and India have worked together through various agencies and departments to strengthen health infrastructure and address key health priorities. This collaborative spirit is not merely about working side by side, it is about forging lasting connections building mutual trust and achieving common goals that transcend borders and time, advancing frontiers, in other words. Our U.S. health agencies have been at the forefront of this partnership, working diligently with Indian counterparts to strengthen pandemic preparedness and support resilient healthcare systems. Over the past few years, our collaborative efforts have intensified, particularly in the face of the unprecedented challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Through close coordination with government, academic institutions, and the private sector, we have prepared, responded, and learned from this global health crisis. The US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, has played a pivotal role in supporting India's outbreak response capabilities. We have partnered at the national, state, and local levels to strengthen outbreak response and support the public health workforce. Disease surveillance systems, infection prevention control and laboratory diagnostics have been key areas of focus, boosting a robust healthcare system in India. Furthermore, the Vaccine Action Program, led by the US National Institutes of Health, has been instrumental in supporting the development of new vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. This collaboration has not only advanced medical research, but also made the world better equipped to combat current and future diseases. By pooling our resources and expertise, we are fostering a global community that is more prepared and resilient against health threats. Amidst the pandemic, the US Food and Drug Administration has been actively working with Indian counterparts to share best practices on medical product regulation. This exchange of knowledge and experience is essential, especially in times of crisis, highlighting the need for international cooperation and partnership to build responsive and efficient healthcare systems. The COVID-19 pandemic has taught us a crucial lesson that when faced with large-scale threats, collaboration with multiple stakeholders around the globe is vital. As our specific health challenges may differ across various global settings, our shared goals of providing affordable, high-quality healthcare solutions for our citizens remain constant. To achieve these objectives, 
Driving innovation in biomedical research is crucially important, and that is where our partnership can make a significant impact. Today, I expect, extend my heartfelt gratitude for inviting me to witness the unveiling of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Liver Foundation of West Bengal and Virginia Commonwealth University. This MOU represents a firm commitment to fostering medical and academic exchanges between our two countries, forging new pathways for collaboration and propelling medical research to new heights. The US-India collaboration is nothing short of transformative. This partnership has strengthened both nations, making the world safer, healthier, and more prosperous as a result. The MOU between the Liver Foundation, um, West Bengal, and, and VCU is an exemplification of our joint commitment to developing and strengthening medical and academic exchanges. The generous philanthropic contributions from visionaries like John Martin play a pivotal role in enhancing these collaborative efforts. Beyond healthcare, the collaboration between the United States and India extends to various other domains, encompassing education, technology, trade, and defense. Our educational exchange has enriched the lives of countless students and scholars, fostering a deeper understanding of each other's cultures and traditions. Currently, there are more than 200,000 Indian students studying in the United States. Last week, I was at an event to uh, send off Indian students who were heading to Columbia University. This was just students from Kolkata. 21 of them were going to Columbia University. And the chance to sit with those students who really are the best and the brightest as they're heading off to, to India was a real treat. And it was an example of just how vibrant the exchanges between our two countries are. In the realm of technology, both the US and India have been at the forefront of innovation and research. Our collaborative efforts have led to advancements in various domains from artificial intelligence to renewable energy. Startups and tech companies from India have found opportunities and support in the US market while American firms have tapped into India's vast talent pool and innovation landscape. As we look to the future, the potential for collaboration between the US and India is immense. With our shared commitment to democracy, freedom, and human rights, we have the opportunity to be a force for good in the world. By working together, we can promote inclusive economic growth, advance scientific research, and foster innovation that benefits all humanity. To further strengthen our collaboration, it is essential to encourage people-to-people -people exchanges and cultural interactions. Because the Indian diaspora in the United States is so strong and vibrant, Indians generally know the United States better than Americans know India. Ambassador Garcetti has said that he believes Americans are missing out. He'd love to bring more Americans to India to work, to study, to visit. When our country's leaders announced the expansion of scholarships to encourage American students to come study in India, including under our joint Fulbright Nehru Education Exchange Foundation, it laid a clear marker. The US Department of State is also working with Indian academic institutions to develop compelling study abroad programs with US colleges and universities. We've established the joint task force linking the Association of American Universities and leading Indian institutions to expand research and university partnerships. We're working with the government of India to help make it easier for US universities to expand their presence here in India, to create joint degree programs and foster joint research programs in STEM fields, as well as upskilling opportunities through community colleges. We're also thrilled that so many Indians want to experience the United States directly, to study, conduct business, see family and friends, and enjoy the many wonders of our country. We would like to see the numbers of Indians visiting the U.S. grow. It takes a lot of work and coordination to respond to the extraordinary interest in the U.S. from India, and we are striving to make the pro process of traveling to the U.S. as efficient as possible. In conclusion, collaboration between the U.S. and India is a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of partnership and a driving force behind positive change in the world. Let us embrace this spirit of collaboration as we are here today with enthusiasm and determination. Let us work hand in hand to build a world that is more prosperous, inclusive, and peaceful. The possibilities truly are endless and our potential is limitless. 
Thank you all for inviting me to this momentous occasion. May our collaboration continue to make a positive impact and transform lives for the better. Thank you very much. We are towards the conclusion of this morning's program. Uh, it's my pleasure to request the next person to take the dice. He's one of the most spontaneously eloquent speakers that I know, but the president of the Labour Foundation West Bengal, Dr. Oshkar Nandu Konar, is now requested to do the closing honours. First, I would request him to please present this memento to Mr. Pratt. I request Dr. Oji Choudhury to please make the presentation of this. And finally, Ashok for the vote of thanks. At the end, it's my pleasant duty to offer a, a customary vote of thanks. But on this occasion, I would certainly, as uh, recollecting the memory and the contributions from John C. Martin, basically that has made it possible that this institute has today is basically, you know, from the contributions and encouragement from uh, Dr. John C. Martin. And I would like to thank his uh, legacy that we have to carry on for the future. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Adrian Pratt for being present today on this occasion and uh, to Dr. Arun Shanyal, who has been our friend, philosopher and guide from today, who will lead us to the next chapter. Professor Partho Mojumdar also is going to guide us with the new endeavor of John C. Martin Liver Research Center. I would also like to thank the Friends of Liver Foundation, which is really carrying out a remarkable job at the other part of the um, Atlantic. And uh, some of the, Dr. Arnob Bashu is present here. And I'd like to thank Dr. M. N. Roy, Dr. Molloy Day, and others on this momentous occasion, and our Friends of Liver Foundation locally, who has supported us I think the support that we need to go forward is extremely important. As we all know, the academic world, the research world, and the clinical world, they all are facing problems. So we must stick together, work together for a better future. Thank you. Oh, my God.